On this episode of Ghost Hunters International, GHI is called into Poland to investigate the site of history's most tragic failure, the Valkyrie bombing. Stauffenberg tried to kill Hitler here, so this Operation Valkyria took place. The plot to kill Hitler blew up in their faces, but are the conspirators still trapped in a nightmare? What is that? It sounds like it's walking closer to us. Barry and Paul attempt to touch minds of pure evil in the Fuhrer's bunker. Something's happening. We're being watched. I can feel it. What the f While Rob and Brandy bury the needles in the former SS barracks. Oh, you're going crazy. What new terror awaits the team when GHI enters the wolf's lair? I just heard something back here. GHI's first time in Poland. Tonight we're heading to the Wolf's Lair here in Poland on the border of Russia, where Hitler was planning his invasion into Russia. So Brandy, you know the details. Why don't you fill everyone in? All right, guys, we have an incredibly big investigation tonight at the Wolf's Lair. It was built in 1940. Hitler spent the majority of the war at the Wolf's Lair. At one time, it contained about 50 different bunkers. It's pretty expansive and probably one of the more dangerous locations that we've ever done. <laughs> Wandering around the dark in the most dangerous locations we've been to. Yeah, sounds <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Now, our client's not quite sure exactly what's going on with this supposed paranormal activity that people are telling her about. Claims of hearing footsteps, people coughing or clearing their throat, papers shuffling, disembodied voices. One person claims that they have a photograph of Hitler himself. And tonight, after midnight, it's actually Hitler's birthday. I'm thinking that this must be it up here. Hi. My name's Jadwiga. Rob, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Barry, Paul. The Wolf's Lair is a huge conglomeration of bunkers. This was Adolf Hitler's command post on the Eastern Front, very close to the Soviet border. It's also, you probably know, that Stauffenberg tried to kill Hitler here, so this Operation Valkyria took place. Also, we've got some paranormal stuff here. I would like to show you around this place. That would be terrific. We'll follow you. Yeah. This is Hitler's bunker, the biggest construction in this forest. Imagine he never invited Eva Brown here. And what type of activities are reported here? There was a tourist, and she could hear a voice behind her but she didn't understand because it was a different language. OK. And now, where is the middle of Hitler's bunker? A Polish tourist took picture, and he took photos that it looks like Hitler's face, you know? Well, maybe if we could get a copy of that photograph um, and see this alleged face of Adolf, and it'll help us um, understand what's going on. Yes, please. All right, shall we head on? Now we are in a guest bunker. I'm sometimes scared in this place. Actually, temporarily, Hitler used this bunker. His bunker wasn't ready, so he used guest bunker. When sometimes I'm walking alone, I feel stranger. Also, for me, this place is full of mystery, you know? Mm. And we could say maybe paranormal, I could use this word. OK. So just follow me. Watch your step, please. This is the hotel. But in wartime was a place for bodyguard of Hitler. So it will be your place tonight. OK. <laughs> it was a lady near the small table. Mm -hmm. She was quite terrified because he heard something behind her. When she just turned, she, she couldn't see nothing. 
She was terrified, really terrified. We have a variety of equipment. We can see if perhaps we can measure something that might have been giving her the idea something was behind her. Is there anything else in the hotel that people have reported? Yes, yeah, sure, sure. Number seven. I had just changed into my night clothes for the evening, and my fiance, Lauren, was in the bed next to me. It was very quiet. Then I felt a presence lean over me, lean into my ear, and start speaking German. I sat up in bed. I started shaking. I hear Mary's voice, and it, I could tell she was very worried. She told me what she had heard, and she ripped the mattress off, threw it against mine, and she just wrapped herself in the blanket and held onto my hand for the rest of the night. OK, so we'll make sure that we get investigators in this room, kind of keep an eye on anything that might happen. Yes. OK, shall we go? I would like to show you the building where it was assassination attempt to kill Hitler. So it was over there, just behind us, in this part. The assassination attempt to move the Hitler from the power had place in the 20th of July, 1944. Stauffenberg was called for a, like a regular meeting, and he just basically put TNT briefcase under the table. And there were people injured and died from the explosion, but Hitler survived. I was at the site where the explosion went off. I heard, like, shoes and boots. You could hear papers and maps being shuffled. I could feel the, the presence of these men. Thank you so much for taking us around, because it's a massive location. And by you pointing out where those hot spots are, it'll be easier yeah. for us to really take a look at the claims of activity and come back to you and let you know if they really are paranormal or not. It will be great that you show me. OK, we'll see you soon. Thank bye you bye. for everything. Thanks. Here we go. Despite the fact that this is a rather large location, the reports of activity are pretty localized. We know which buildings they've transpired in, and we're ready to address them. OK. All right, first things first. Barry, let's talk about what kind of cameras we got set up here. This camera covers the memorial site for the Polish soldiers that died clearing the minefields. There's also been a claim made there that this person was getting the feeling of SS soldiers patrolling the area. This particular camera angle covers the area of the field of Valkyrie plot bombing. There have also been reports of hearing paper being shuffled and also the sense of presence coming up behind people. All right, so why don't we grab equipment, be on your toes, and let's have a good investigation. This was used to house the elite guards, the SS. A lot of people are reporting feelings of unease, thinking something's sneaking up on them, thinking they're being watched, people hearing voices in German. Brandy and I were following up the stories here in the hotel itself. We were hoping that we could get some EVP work done and possibly capture some of these voices that are being heard. EVP session with Rob and Brandy in the lobby. My name is Rob, this is Brandy. And what we want to do, and what we're hoping to do, is communicate with you. There's a certain piece of equipment that spirits seem to be able to manifest enough to manipulate, electromagnetic fields being one of them. So using devices to measure electromagnetic fields is possible to attempt communication with a spirit. And our job is to find out if you're here and what you want. Look at that. That just sparked up. It was up to about three. You may have noticed that that box you just walked past, that the lights changed as you passed. See it? I guess did it again. That box I just mentioned to you, this one here, we saw the lights change on it. What the hell? What's the most you can do? Can you show us how high? That's only two. Three. Can you do more than that? And you get to four? Uh, I'll tell you what, here. I'm going to give you everything I got to communicate. OK, now. Is that the camera that does the long exposures? Mm -hmm. So that we can hopefully track some movement here. You ready for your big photographic opportunity? Let us know by changing one of these devices. Show us another light and I'll take the picture. Ooh. Can you stand right by those devices? 
Here we go. Now, when I look at these pictures, are we going to be able to see you? Or are you going to remain? Oh. Whoa. <laughs> so we're going to be able to see your face? Are you a man or a woman? Whoa. A man? A woman. Brandy and I were following up here in the hotel of the stories of people being scared, as well as voices in German that has really upset some of the guests. Are you a man or a woman? Whoa. A man? A woman. Some of the devices were firing off uh, to specific questions that we were posing. Would you be willing to tell us your name? Do you understand? Were you a member of the Nazi party? Did you stay here with Hitler? Did you die here? There we go. So you're a woman, and unfortunately you died here. Did you die of natural causes? Or did someone perhaps murder you? Still here with us? You getting tired? Communication with the spirit seems to diminish over time. Possibly the energy that the spirit needs to manipulate these devices wanes. All right, let's get out of here. All right. EVP session end. It's blessed from blown out like a balloon. Oh, I see. So something's gone off inside it. Yeah, I think this is one of the places that they use the explosives on. So this is Bunker 27. EVP session, Paul and Barry. Uh, this is Bunker 27, the escort guards. Is there any of Hitler's escort guard wants to come forward and talk to us now. Wo ist der Name bitte? You heard that? I don't see anyone. into the forest in the direction of the sounds to see if I could find out what it was. I discovered that it was actually one of the wildlife deep in the forest. Off. What was that? No, it was an owl. That was an owl? Yeah. Oh, right. Doesn't seem to be too much happening in this bunker. No, no, he said there was some more. Yeah. Um, I think we should head to the next bunker. Sure. Ashley and I headed over to bunker 13, also known as Hitler's bunker. This is it, I believe. Wow. This place is where Hitler spent 800 days, lived here. So it's an awesome thing to be able to come here and investigate. We'll go around this way to get in. A lot of the claims here are people getting strange feelings and lots of photos been taken where they thought they saw a face and possibly the face of Hitler himself. This place is very dangerous, lots of rocks, lots of bars sticking out everywhere. We had to do a ton of climbing. Okay. Wow. EVP session, this is Ashley and Susan in Hitler's bunker. Adolf Hitler, your birthday 
strikes at 12 midnight tonight, and maybe we could capture a picture of you. Did you help protect Hitler? He was an evil man. I guess nobody wants to celebrate Hitler's birthday. And there's nothing to celebrate about Hitler's life either. This world would have been so much better off without him. Ooh. What is that? It sounds like it's walking closer to us, and I don't see anything. I guess nobody wants to celebrate Hitler's birthday. Susan and I went to investigate Hitler's bunker, bunker number 13. Ooh. What is that? It sounds like it's walking closer to us, and I don't see anything. Ashley and I both heard what sounded like heavy footsteps in the leaves coming towards us. Hitler. Come on over here. Is that you finally stepping up? Ooh, I got like this really bright ball of light in my picture just now. The very first picture I took, I caught a ball of light right over where I thought I heard the footsteps. You have to see this picture that I took. Keep taking pictures and keep hearing stuff moving over there. Well, if you're not going to come to us, we're definitely coming to you. Where are you hiding? Come out. I demand that you come forward to us and show yourself. There's a possibility that those footsteps were coming from the outside. We decided to chase it down, which led us deeper into the woods. Hitler, why don't you go ahead and create that bright ball of light again? Is there somebody out here with us? Why are you doing this to us? I am getting, like, strange sensations right now. I honestly have a feeling... Of being watched? Uh, ...that someone's watching me right now, us. Yeah. Why are you doing this to us? Is this all fun and games to you? Hitler, why don't you go ahead and speak up for once? Make a loud noise. Hitler, someone with such great power is backing down from us? Like a coward? Shine your light over there like a... There, you saw like a light? Totally just saw something glowing. Right. Come here, come here, come here, seriously. See it? Take your light away. You see that? It's a reflection of the moon shining through Are the trees sure? over there. No, it's not. That's a candle, dude. Maybe it's for Hitler's birthday. Outside of Hitler's bunker, I did come across a light, red candle lit and set inside of one of the stones. In Poland, I've noticed that people are big into candle memorials. This candle that we did come across was already almost down to the bottom, so whoever did light this candle um, was gone a long time ago. Okay, go get back to the rest of the team and let them know what we got. EAP session end. Now, why don't we set up in here? Okay. Rob and I ended up making it to Bunker 17, which was the staff officer's quarters. I'm going to set the full spectrum up in this corner and just sort okay. of try to shoot as much of the area as possible. The full spectrum camera allows us to capture images in the visible light spectrum, the ultraviolet spectrum, and the infrared spectrum. So if there is any paranormal activity going on in any of these spectrums, we'll be able to capture it. We're told that you speak English. So what we'd like to do is give you a chance to show us that you're here 
by using one of these objects. Could you transmit your voice so that we might hear it through the speaker here? Now, if you're hanging back, you're in the next room. As a show of some faith, could you come through the doorway? Join us within this room so that we can prove to you that all we're looking for is documentation and communication. Any Remove the camera, whatever you just did. Remove it? Whatever, whatever path you just took, take the same path. OK, I'll try to. I thought I just saw a shadow no. dart from about midway on that wall going that way. In this room? Uh-huh. While we were doing the EVP session, I was running full spectrum video, and Rob said that he thought he had seen a shadow dart from behind me very quickly. Be about your height, mm -hmm. moving very fast, faster than your motion of camera, or your, the way you were moving your arm. You mm -hmm. had a slow pan. Right. And this kind of. <laughs> hmm. Have you joined us now? If that was you I saw, if you're darting around, then state your case. I was running video at the, at the same time, so if there was any noise or anything accompanying that shadow, we should have picked it up. EVP session end. Investigating Bunker 13. We were using a mountain of equipment, the laser burst device, the full spectrum with flash mode, motion detection cameras. We had the thermal running, and we wanted to run a Singapore theory to see if there was any remnant of any anything that may have lingered uh, from those days um, during the occupation of Poland. The Singapore theory suggests that if you recreate the environment that a ghost would actually be used to, that you may have a better chance of capturing spirit activity. As we started the, the particular process, Paul was hearing uh, movement from behind him coming uh, deep from within the, the, uh, the bunker itself. I feel very vulnerable right now. I am so... so ready. Adolf? Are you here with us now? Eh? 
Can you come closer to us? We don't mean you any harm. Can you step out from the darkness? It's been a long time since Beethoven has been played in this place. Would you like to hear some more? to talk well then we can't make them i'm really looking forward to this point to get back to analysis and really dig into this and see if we if, if this experiment was successful okay this is it three this is where the actual Operation Valkyrie explosion took place. Well, it definitely looks like this has been blown up. We thought we'd run some audio equipment to see if we could capture the claims of uh, voices heard here. EVP session, this is Ashley and Susan, bunker number three. Is there anyone out here that would like to speak with us? We know this is where the bomb went off. Were you there to witness that? Did you die during that explosion? If you are an SS officer, we've just heard stories about people hearing you, seeing you, feeling your presence, and that's what we want. We want you to say something to us or show yourself to us. Can you do that? How long have you been here? Can you tell us why you choose to stay? Are any soldiers around, any officers? Can you whisper something to one of us? Is there anything we should know before moving on, before we leave? Okay, all right, well, let's head out then. All right. We did have some audio running the whole time we were there, so hoping that we did capture some voices. You know what's kind of interesting? Hmm. Is how much range do you think a spirit would have if Hitler, theoretically, if his spirit was in Berlin somewhere? Yeah. Could he come here if he wanted? Right. You know, I don't think that you necessarily need bus fare. No. All right, well, let's go in and find out. Hmm. Rob and I headed into Bunker 6, uh, which was at one time the guest quarters. Um, right now, it's just a pile of rubble. <gasps> oh, my god, there's rebar everywhere, Rob. Rob decided to go all the way into that rubble, and um, it did make me nervous. What? Huh? What did you say? I didn't say anything. Are you serious? Yeah, I swear to God. And I heard a male voice coming from within the bunker. It sounded like it came from in there with you. What did you say? I didn't say anything. Are you serious? Yeah, swear to God. As soon as Rob and I got to bunker number six, before I could turn on my camera, before Rob could turn on his audio recorder, I heard a male voice coming from within the bunker where Rob was. I didn't say a word. And I have no idea what it was, but it was a male voice and it was a whisper. It wasn't me. All right. Definitely wasn't me. Brandy, you hear that? What? Is there some talking over there? No, I mean, I was rustling my I know chat. you were moving things around. No, I did not hear it. It sounded like it came from over by me. Yeah. Male whisper.
Brandy, it was a pleasure working with you. Rob, don't move around unless you have to. I have to. Where are you? Huh? I guess I heard something back here. You heard something back there? What's back there? Where are you? It's okay, I heard you moving around. What? I have no idea what the voice said. It was male. Um, it's unfortunate that we weren't able to capture it, but you know, it's gonna be a personal experience, I guess had some tapping, which seemed to be in response while the recorder was going way in the, the depth. Okay. So uh, definitely something to look forward to on that Yeah, one. absolutely. When we get to analysis, I need these guys to really figure out what it is that we picked up on in here. Okay, everyone, it's about that time. Let's get back to Central Command and break it down. GHI has the opportunity this evening to stay in the hotel, which was a former barracks for the SS guards. A lot of reports of activity there. We have people feeling like they're being watched, presences, disembodied voices. I've got Paul in one of the rooms that has a lot of activity reported, room number seven. He has a lot of tech that he can utilize there to see if we can get any kind of response. So we're going to make sure that every member of the team has a walkie-talkie, has equipment, has a camcorder, has everything they need to conduct an investigation on their own and knows how to get help and backup from others. We're just about to go into the analysis of the Wolf's Lair, a vast location. There was a lot of audio that we were running, a lot of visual equipment. I'm not quite sure what to expect going into this, but I am excited going into it to see what there truly is here at the Wolf's Lair. Oh, guys. I got something pretty clear here. Yeah. In Hitler's bunker, I'm asked a question and I get a response. Reference to English. Wow, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Good. What do you think mm -hmm. it says? You ask the question spoken to English. Do you speak English? Mm -hmm. Yes. I kind of made out a yes, sir. Reference to English. Certainly a male, he certainly speaks English. Well, let's uh, see if there's anything else in the other bunkers. Mary. Mm -hmm. I did a couple of like little orb experiments mm -hmm. on my own using mm -hmm. the full spectrum camera. I had these pictures, and I thought maybe you can give me some insight as to what it is. Mm -hmm. So the first one was in Bunker 13. Yeah. As soon as we heard the footsteps, I don't know what to think about that one. We are aware, Brandy, during our own investigation that there was huge amounts of dust in there. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're seeing here. It's just simply a dust particle. You can see that in the next picture as well. Yeah. So my question is, do you believe that there are such things as real anomalous balls of energy that can be captured on film. Back home, we have yeah. this thing called the ghost light, and if you go down this dirt road, the telephone wire, all the wires are open, and it creates like this ball of electricity, and it sometimes floats out into the road, and people used to say it's like a ghost man holding his lantern crossing the street. So like, it's little yeah. things like that that mm -hmm. gives you some insight on things, and it mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. Uh, work well done, and uh, let's see if anything else should turn up. I hear a woman's voice, Brandy. Bringing our investigation to the hotel, we were investigating room seven. Mm -hmm. Take a listen to that. All I can say, really, I'm actually kind of speechless. Why is she asking for him? Where is Hitler? That adds a great mystery to it. Why is there someone, a female, in the right. hotel? 
a certain the, the mystery is deepening further and further. Mm -hmm. But uh, Paul, were you able to find the, the the picture that was reported to be of Hitler's face? I did. However, on the larger screen, you can see it is in fact not in the space, and in fact, it almost has exactly the same texture yeah, and yeah. such as the wall. There's matrixing in there, mm -hmm. involved in that for sure. I certainly don't see. Hitler's face. Work well done. Thank you. Let's see if anything else should turn up. Sure. Hey guys, I'm going over the uh, full spectrum footage from Bunker 17. Mm -hmm. I got something you need to see. That is a superb catch, Brandy. Nice to see you again. Good to see you too. How are you in investigation? The investigation was great. Obviously, this is a very big area. We had a lot to cover. We wanted to make sure that we got different teams together. And one looked for the alternative explanations. There was a huge amount of, of mystery surrounding this site, even during construction. And certainly that has filtered through right into the paranormal investigation that we've done. We had the story where the bomb went off as part of Operation Valkyrie, uh, what's now Bunker 3, or the ruins yeah. of Bunker Number 3. Now, to look for what might be happening there, first, Barry set up a DVR camera, an infrared mm -hmm. camera that watched that area throughout the night, throughout the entire investigation. Um, nothing on there. Mm -hmm. Now, the one claim that we did have some idea about is the idea of the shuffling papers, the yeah. papers wrestling around. We want to play for you a piece of audio that we recorded there at the site. What this sound is, I'm going to tell you in advance, this is leaves rustling around. But tell me if it doesn't, couldn't possibly sound similar to papers moving around as well. Go ahead and rustle. OK. It sounds, it sounds like you know. Papers, newspaper being crunched yeah. together. Yes. So because we were not there when this experience transpired, we can't say that this is the sound that they heard. But we can say that we captured no evidence of anyone walking through that area, anything paranormal, anything that made our meters go off that might show us that something strange is going on. Um, where the bomb itself went off was relatively quiet. I see. Brandy and I went to investigate bunker number six, the guest house, where Hitler spent some time as well. As we're entering the investigation... What? Huh? What did you say? I didn't say anything. Are you serious? Yeah, I swear to God. We had this whole back and forth. A few minutes later... Brandy, did you hear that? What? Is there some talking over there? Male whisper. No, I did not hear it. Nothing. Unfortunately, when we went back over the recordings, there was nothing there. Well, there were a lot of personal experiences. We did pick up a sound that we found interesting. We want to play it for you and see what you think. This recording was captured in room seven of the hotel. What you're listening for comes in here. The lady voice, she wanted to know mm -hmm. why is Hitler. It's really mystery. It was very strange for us um, because of the questions that started to arise after we heard this. Why, first of all, is she speaking English? And why does she refer to the Fuhrer as Hitler? There was a mention that high rank officer from SS uh, brought here Polish lady from Warsaw. She was model, you know. Uh -huh. uh, her name was Mirowska. But who knows? Mm -hmm. Do we have any idea what happened to this Polish model who came here with the SS officer? I just know that it was American spy, very beautiful girl. Uh, her code name was Cynthia. And that may explain why she spoke to us in English. You imagine if Hitler was staying more than 800 days 
how many people could visit. <laughs> Got one more thing we want to share with you. I was in this building with Brandy investigating. What I saw was a shadow go through that door and dart along the wall. Now we're going to play you the video. After we pass by the door, keep an eye out around that corner. Uh. Okay. There's a door there. Now we'll just run that one more time for yes, you. Please. Look in that corner. Look towards that corner. We got past the door. Got it. Sure. You see something in the corner? A little. Now, we take that one shot in which it's panning by, and we can actually show you the picture. This is number one. Now, what Brandy did was she made this photo into a negative to make it easier for us to see exactly what it is we're looking. We'll show you the negative of the shot. Oh. Yeah. You can see the window frame, and you can see that this is obscuring part of the window frame. Door is about here. Yeah. I saw something dart that way. And then the video picked up that. So what we see here is someone looking out through the window. I mean, we can't say that that's a, definitely a ghost. We can say that there is something paranormal, beyond normal. There's something strange, because there shouldn't have been something blocking that corner of the window. Now I understand. Yeah, you couple that with the fact that I saw this shadow move towards that area, and you've got something very strange. Not something definitively a ghost. We're not saying, look at this picture, we're, we're positive it's a ghost. But there's something strange there. So again, a lot of mysteries here. I think it's the opinion of the team now that the wolf's lair is indeed haunted. What do you think? I, I must uh, say thank you very much that you're coming and try to help me to understand, you know, the stories which people sometimes told me. It's, uh, your investigation, it helped me, helped me for my job to people. I just try to explain them that mystery exists here. You are very welcome all the time here. Okay, my dear, it's Thank been a pleasure. You very much. Thank it was you. nice to meet you. Thank you. Take care. Shall we go? Yes. The GHI investigation was quite, you know, interesting for me. They helped me to know a paranormal aspect for the place. From top to bottom, a solid case. What did Jadwiga think of everything that you brought to her? She finished with the thought that this is just adding to my repertoire of what I can teach people about the history about the wolf's lair. And I think that hit the nail on the head. And I think, Brandy, the mystery that we had during analysis with the lady in room right. seven in the hotel, um, she was indicating that it actually may be a spy really? um, who worked for the Americans. That is crazy. So, you know, not only did we do our side on the, on the paranormal front, but she added and kind of answered some of our questions about the history as well. That's a complete case. All right, well, good work, everyone, and uh, let's keep it moving.